These are your integrated math two, module four, topic one, lesson four notes. This is video two of three uh, for this topic or for this uh, section, I should say, in section 4.1.4. Our learning targets are I can solve quadratic equations using the factoring method, and I can find the roots or the zeros of a quadratic using the factoring method. So example one, we're going to solve this quadratic equation, 4x squared plus 8x equals 12. So the first thing we want to do is we want to have to set equal to 0 in standard form. So we're going to subtract 12 from both sides. So we'll have 4x squared plus 8x minus 12 equals 0. So now the factoring method, we want to factor it. So we want to go ahead and factor this. Ooh, the a value looks like it's 4. Whoa, 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 wait, not so fast. What should we always look for first? That's right, GCF. Does this have a common factor that we can pull out here? So we have a 4, an 8, and negative 12. That's right, we can pull out a 4. Okay, so two ways you can do this. This is an equation. I could actually just divide both sides of the equation by 4. But let's just show you right now how to pull out the 4 factor form. If I pull it out, it'd be 4 times x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. All right. I just want to show you that if I was just doing pure factoring. All right. And since now we have an equation, I'm going to go ahead and divide that 4 out. So we can divide both sides by 4, divide by 4, and I get, I'm going to write this over here, x squared plus 2x minus 3 still equals 0, right? 0 divided by 4, still 0. All right? So now, this is an easier one to factor. Um, I'm going to do my diamond. We still have two numbers. I multiply to negative 3. They're going to add to 2. I'm going to do my generic rectangle. And here's your x squared. Here's your negative 3. These two boxes add to 2x. So that's going to be what? 3 times negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 3 plus negative 1 is 2. So this is going to be 3x. And this is going to be, uh, oops, negative 1x. So negative 1x, sorry. There we go. All right. So I start here. Greatest common factor going across is x. So this is x times x. And then it's going to be x times 3. And then this is x times negative 1. So we rewrite this in factored form. And I get x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 3 equals 0. All right, that was the hardest part. Now we're going to apply the zero product property we talked a lot about in class, which says that if, if you... If the product of two or more factors equals zero, then one of these factors has to be zero. Okay, so to solve for this, we're gonna go x minus one could equal zero, or x plus three could equal zero. All right, this is applying the zero product property. And then from here, it's very easy to solve the equation, right? We're gonna add one to both sides here, and we get x equals one. We're gonna subtract three from both sides here, and we get x equals negative 3. All right? How can we check it? We can substitute them back into the original uh, equation and see if it works. So I'll try just the 1 for now. 1 squared is 1. It'd be 4 plus 8 is 12. 12 equals 12. If I did negative 3, I'd get, what, 9 times 4 is 36. 36 plus negative 24, that's 12. 12 equals 12. Check. All right? So that's how you, how you check it. All right, let's look at another example. Sometimes the directions are going to say, oops, skipping it. I'm going to say find the roots. Okay, it's giving me a function notation. F of x equals x squared minus 11x plus 24. Find the roots. Same process as solving a quadratic equation, right? In this case, f of x, or if it was y equals, or the y is going to become 0. So we have 0 equals x squared minus 11x plus 24. All right, I'm going to factor this. Any, any common factors? No, there's none this time. 
So two numbers that multiply to 24 add to negative 11. X squared, 24. All right. Ooh. This is positive. This is negative. So I know they're both negative. So now factors of 24 that basically add up to 11, 8, and 3. So it's negative 8 and negative 3. So it's going to be negative 8x and negative 3x. Yeah, I get it. I did that pretty fast. If you struggle with this, what do you do? You write down the factors of 24. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. And then you think about it, which ones of these are going to get you to this 11? And that's how you get, oh, it's going to be negative 3 and negative 8 because 3 plus 8 is 11. So you can see it better. So if you ever get stuck with a bigger one, just write out all the potential factors. Helps you out. Okay, so now we start here, going across for the GCF. I can pull out an X. This is X, negative 8. This is negative 3, right? Because X times negative 3 is negative 3X. And then let's double check. Negative 3 times negative 8, positive 24. So we have 0 equals X minus 3 times X minus 8. Factored form now. So now we can apply zero product property, right? And we're going to set each factor to 0. So we're going to say x minus 3 half pin equals 0. Add 3 to both sides. And you get x equals 3. x minus 8 equals 0. We add 8 to both sides. And so we get x equals 8. I do want you to show this step. I know sometimes students get frustrated trying to show this little part here. But a lot of times we will have harder ones where maybe it's 7x minus 3 times 4x plus 9, right? And it's not going to just be the opposite there. You need to do the little math. And so if you do it this way all the time, it's no harder to do, the, to do those problems, okay? There is a method to the madness. All right, this ends your notes for video 2 or 3. Stay tuned for uh, video 3. Thanks for taking your notes.